From the Navier-Stokes equations, we derive the vorticity equation in two dimensions that reduces to an equation for the scalar vorticity field. But that equation depends on two components of the velocity field. We want to now reduce the two components of the velocity field to a single scalar field. That scalar field will be called the stream function. So we haven't used the continuity equation yet. So we'll start with the continuity equation, del dot u, in polar coordinates, that's 1 over r, um, d dr of r u r plus d u theta d theta. And we know that this is uh, equal to 0 right, for an incompressible fluid. So we can replace now the velocity field by a scalar field that's called the stream function in order to um, directly enforce the zero of uh, del dot u. So how do we do that? Well, we can let this r u r equals the partial derivative of a stream function. Uh, divided by theta, so that we have a mixed partial derivative here. And then we can let u sub theta equals partial derivative of psi with respect to r with a negative sign. So then the sum of these two terms will be the sum of the two mixed partial derivatives with one that has a negative sign. This psi, then, is called the stream function. OK, so now the continuity equation is satisfied. Um, and we can eliminate the two components of the velocity field by the derivatives of the stream function. Um, what we still need to do is determine a relationship between the scalar vorticity and the stream function. So the scalar vorticity, omega, is uh, in polar coordinates is 1 over r times d dr of r u theta minus d u r d theta. So we've already derived the scalar vorticity in terms of the two components of the velocity field, but now we want to replace uh, u theta and u r by the stream function. So this is 1 over r d dr, and then r u theta is using this second uh, definition here. r u theta then is minus r d psi dr minus d u r d theta. So u r is 1 over r d d theta. So minus um, uh, d d theta. And then this term u r is 1 over r. So 1 over r. Um, d psi d theta. OK? It looks a lot more complicated than it is. So we can factor out a um, 1 over r. So we have a 1 over r squared. And then we need to multiply this by r. We also have a negative sign. We can factor out the negative sign and the um, 1 over r from inside here. So we get a negative 1 over r squared. And then we put in the r from here. So we have an r d dr, and then an r d dr of psi. And then this term is a plus d squared psi d theta squared. OK? So that gives us the vorticity in terms of the derivatives of the stream function. Uh, this whole operator here, operating on psi, 
is actually the Laplacian. So this equation is a complicated way of writing the Laplacian of psi, and then the minus sign goes on the left is negative omega. So this is valid in both uh, polar coordinates and in Cartesian coordinates. This is the polar coordinate form of uh, this, uh, what's, this is called a Poisson equation, two-dimensional Poisson equation. So let me summarize. The idea here then is that we, um, we're replacing the um, two-component uh, velocity field by a scalar vorticity field and a scalar stream function. Um, we do that here. We have already have the equation for the scalar vorticity field, but it still depends on the two components of the velocity field. So we can make use of the um, continuity equation, del dot u equals zero, to um, replace the two components of the velocity field by a stream function. So if we define the stream function like this, then we automatically satisfy the continuity equation. Then we can go back and look at our definition of the, vo of the scalar vorticity field and replace the two components of the velocity field by the, our new definition of the stream function. And we show that the stream function satisfies the equation del squared psi equals negative omega. I'm Jeff Chasnov. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.